throughout the year. Um, we have completed our sessions for the year, but we have one coming up in January on video modeling uh, to manage behavior. And then we have a uh, nationally known uh, Dr. Ari Tuckman doing couples in February. So stay tuned. And I think we might go back to an in-person half day event in the spring. So we're excited about that. So check us out. I'm going to put my email and information in the chat. Thanks. Okay, great. That's really exciting. Hi, everyone. I'm Alexandra Roark. I'm a therapist here at the Houston Neuroscience Brain Center. I work with children and adolescents. And here at the Brain Center, we do EEGs, which are brain recordings, so that we can look for the root cause of symptoms. We send out the recordings to our team of neurologists who can look for neurobiomarkers that could be potential causes for symptoms. And we match that with the clinical assessment from the client. And then depending on the results, we can refer out to other practitioners as needed. We do neurofeedback training, which is brain training. We have photobiomodulation services, and then we have the talk therapy services as well. And so now I am excited to introduce our speaker. Naturopath Tracy Southwick has been serving others in the holistic health world for over 28 years. Her passion has always been to educate and inspire all people to address their health concerns from a mind, body, spirit perspective. Through the years, Tracy has hosted three radio popular shows, had regular appearances on Fox 26 in Houston, and spoken at multiple conferences and seminars. Her love of teaching led to the creation of Mind, Body, Spirit Release Academy in 2020, through which she and her staff train health practitioners and doctors from around the world how to integrate her proprietary holistic technique into their practices. This technique, mind, body, spirit release, both identifies and helps clients and patients release unprocessed emotions and limiting beliefs so that they are best able to heal. Her unique and effective technique is rapidly becoming a game changer in the field of holistic medicine as one of the most popular and innovative emotional release techniques available. How cool. Okay, and with that, Okay, Trace, it's all yours. Go ahead and uh, hit um, share screen and let's get on with this. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, guys. I'm just so honored to be here with uh, this amazing group of professionals. You guys, I, I had no idea about all the resources that are out there, so I'm very excited. Um, I do know Fusion Academy because I know two people um, whose children have gone there and had uh, great experiences. So I'm so grateful that you guys are there. It's such a needed, everything that you guys are doing is so needed. And Dr. Ron, you as well. So I am going to share my screen and let's see, let me start my slideshow. Maybe if I can get this to from the beginning, there we go. Okay, perfect. So um, as you know, my name is Tracy Southwick and I am I'm gonna talk today about toxic agriculture. So that's kind of a broad term and I'm only gonna talk about um, some things that, um, you know, maybe are hidden, you don't know about, you're not aware of. I do not want this to be something that scares people and it will probably sound a little scary at first but it is that there are solutions. And I think just knowing what the exposures are and knowing what um, you can do about it gives you so much more empowerment and can definitely help with um, what to do going forward and help your whole family. So I am going to spotlight, there we go. Put me up in the corner here. I don't know if it changes your view, but it changed mine. So let's talk first about um, just in general pesticides. So pesticides, I always thought that pesticides were different than herbicides, were different than insecticides or which is herb uh, insecticides and fungicides. So pesticides is really an umbrella term. So it's actually a chemical that kills 
something that you don't want in your environment. So molluscicides are um, considered pesticides, anything that's considered a pest. So I'm going to use that term really broadly, and I'm not going to go into specifics about pesticides. I'll maybe talk a little bit about glyphosate because that's so pervasive and such an issue right now. Um, and atrazine is a big one too. If you guys uh, have read any of the studies on that, that's the one that actually turned, I believe the male frogs female, which is really scary when you look at the endocrine disruption and, and what's happening with reproductive systems. Um, 2,4-D is, is essentially agent orange. So, and then we have some other ones um, that are in there as well. So we're going to talk about where we're exposed, some hidden exposures of pesticides. What are the risks of pesticide exposure? What are some, some of the symptoms? And how, I didn't write this on here, but we'll talk a little bit about testing and how do we detoxify from these chemicals. So to begin with, pesticides are, are in our food supply, as you can imagine. If you're not familiar with the Environmental Working Group, you can go to EWG or environmentalworkinggroup.org or EWG.org and look up their Dirty Dozen. So their Dirty Dozen is their list that comes out annually of the highest pesticide-ridden produce. So it will they'll do testing on all the major produce items in the United States and say these 15 or so, it used to be dozen, it's usually like dozen plus two or plus three, account for probably the top 80% of pesticide exposure you'll get through foods. Um, it's usually very thin skinned fruits and, veg and vegetables. So it'll be things like strawberries and lettuce. Of course, non-organic is what I'm talking about. They also have something called the Clean 15, which the Clean 15 are the cleanest of the produce. So those are the ones, if, if you're on a budget, um, you really don't need to worry so much about paying the extra money for uh, organic versions of these. So for instance, um, avocado is usually on that list and so is bananas or so are bananas because they have thicker skins and they don't tend to absorb those pesticides as much. I always add coffee and peanut butter to that list because those are super highly sprayed pesticide foods that aren't obviously in the produce department, but they have a lot of pesticides. So if you're a coffee drinker, make sure that you get organic coffee. And if you drink decaf, make sure that it is, um, water purified so uh or water distilled coffee and the way that they they process it is using water versus formaldehyde which most um coffees that are decaffeinated they use formaldehyde but organic will not use that so we think about um things that are gmo so the big thing is this says it's non-gmo well you can have a non-GMO crop that is sprayed with glyphosate very heavily. They discovered that glyphosate, which is Roundup, actually will dry out a crop really fast. So most grains can dry out really quickly and get to market a lot faster if they spray them with glyphosate after they have matured. So they can be a non-GMO crop, but they can still be loaded with glyphosate. So my suggestion is to always go with it's either to either tested as glyphosate free or it's not it or it's organic organically grown you can also get uh, pesticides from drift from nearby crops animal food uh, animals that's fed non-organic feed or that are treated so a lot of i lived on a ranch and we lived off the land for many years and and you can't believe if you haven't lived there how much they use different dewormers and, and um, pesticides on the animals. They'll just run them down the back, just pour liquid pesticides on the backs of your animals. And they also pour them over the food, in the food, put them in the water. So really important to focus on clean meat because you're getting residues of all of this stuff. Farm-raised fish and seafood, um, those are very high, can have high levels of chemicals. Uh, forever chemicals, but also um, pesticides. A lot of runoff, right, from um, crops will go into those ponds where they're raising crawfish and uh, tilapia and those kinds of fish that are typically um, farm-raised. 
rainwater, uh, I believe it's 80% of the rainwater has glyphosate in it, which is kind of scary. And then in the air, because it comes up off of, you know, it's we're being sprayed and it comes off the soil. Remember, I'm not trying to make you scared. I just want to make you aware that we can get glyphosate in a lot, a lot of areas. So at, ha at home, lawn sprays, you know, kids walk around, run around barefoot in the yard, your dogs walk around barefoot in the yard. If you're spraying with chemicals, those are absorbed through the bottoms of your feet, which have the biggest holes, the biggest pores in your body, and you can absorb those chemicals. Again, the deem warmers that you use on your pets, if you use those um, things that go down the back of your pet for fleas and ticks, those get into the skin and they uh, get on the fur and you can actually get those from your animals. Of course, there are options for more natural treatments for animals as well. Home pest controls. There are a lot in Houston, everywhere now, there are lots of natural home pest control solutions. Boric acid is one. There are essential oil solutions. In my opinion, there's really no reason to have to use in a typical home anything other than the natural pest control solutions that uh, they call them green solutions that you can get. And they're typically really not much more expensive. Lice, treatment, lice treatments, a uh, big one for where people would get exposed to pesticides. Neighborhood and city mosquito spraying is a big one. One thing to think about with this is if you have a swimming pool, which I'm saying this because I do, and I've thought about this a lot, our neighborhood, we have no choice. They spray for mosquitoes and that will literally settle on, it settles on your lawn, but it also settles in your pool and it piles up, right? So it's really important to think about how can we optimize our health to be able to detox these chemicals. And then clothing, actually cotton is a super highly sprayed um, crop for glyphosate. So those are some of the household um, exposure risks, community in the water supply. There's definitely pesticides in the water supply. Schools, same with um, at home, they're spraying, you know, Roundup around the schools to get rid of the weeds. They're spraying for bugs inside the schools. We have no idea what they're spraying um, around the schools, but they're definitely there. Office buildings, same thing. In parks, it's very common to spray for weeds. Um, like I was talking about earlier, the pools, rivers, ponds, oceans, a lot of runoff from crops, golf courses and country clubs, super high pesticide exposure. In fact, um, I'm a golfer and we have three nine holes on our golf course and they just um, literally sprayed one of them. They're redoing one of the courses and it is brown um, because they sprayed it with glyphosate to kill all the grass so they could redo it and they sprayed it multiple times and people were playing on it and people pick up their balls and touch their balls after they're rolling around in all of those pesticides. In fact, um, one of my friends, he and her husband and his best friend both had an incredibly rare form of cancer. The friend died from this cancer. Her husband has not, he survived. He had a bone marrow transplant amongst a lot of other therapy, but they look back and think that it comes from a golf course pesticide because they both played every week on this same golf course. And for good luck, they would lick the balls before they hit them. And that's a very crazy, um, but common kind of a, a good luck thing that uh, the golfers were do, will do. So don't, don't lick your golf balls. Travel. This is a surprising one to a lot of people, especially when you go overseas, or if you go down to Mexico or Central America or South America, it is legal for them to use a lot of chemicals that are not legal and not regulated in the United States. Of course, we import a lot of those foods as well. And there's really no regulatory agency that really looks into these. So it's, it's kind of spot checking. They just don't have the capacity to do it. So hotels and resorts are a big one. Think about staying in a beautiful big resort and coming home with bed bugs that would not look so good for the reviews of that resort. So resorts very commonly can bomb rooms, maybe even in between guest stays for bugs so that there are no roaches in the room, no spiders in the room and no bed bugs. And all of those chemicals will be on the surfaces of everything in your hotel room. Um, restaurants, they do the same thing. They'll spray for for uh, mosquitoes, if it's an indoor outdoor restaurant, they'll spray for um, 
reaches because they don't want that bad review. They don't want people to be, you know, grossed out and not go back there. I have had multiple people, myself included, go to um, third world countries and have horrible, horrible time with neurological symptoms. So things like can't sleep at night, anxiety, nervousness, sweating, all of these weird, like even tremors. And it comes back to the chemicals that they're spraying in either the hotel rooms or the restaurants or the resorts. Um, airplanes, if you've ever flown to Asia, um, I, and this has happened to me several times, when you get on the airplane, they literally shut the doors of the airplane. They turn, they, they have bottles of pesticides. They open all of the cabinets. So all, everything's exposed and they'll walk down the hall. They, meaning the flight attendants will walk down the halls and literally fumigate the entire airplane while you're on it. So I'm sitting there with my kids going, cover your faces, cover your faces with the blankets. Um, but I've actually had flight attendants that do those routes come to me because they can't sleep. They have all these neurological problems. Their memory is going. Um, they feel horrible. They're exhausted. Once we detoxify them from pesticides, everything comes back to normal. And it's just they're being exposed to those chemicals over and over and over again. They do the same thing in, in cruise ships. They will spray uh, for a lot of chemicals. So um, going from there, what are some of the symptoms? What are some of the effects? So my focus here, and I just have to say that is on long-term exposure. I'm not talking about acute exposure. You know, if you've been exposed to pesticides, don't wait a week and go to a health professional and say, can you detox me from this? You need to call Poison Control Center or 911. And, and figure out what needs to be done in the short term to mitigate some of that damage. Neurological, like I was saying before, very common side effects, migraines, mood disorders, neurological dysfunction, neurodegeneration, memory issues, tremors, dizziness, seizures. Uh, I had a little boy come to me years ago, uh, probably about four or five years ago, and he was having headaches and it was very common that he would have them on Sunday. And I went through my process of, of doing some, uh, we do bio, bio resonance testing and um, came up with pesticides. So I started questioning the mom and she said, well, every Sunday night he goes bicycle riding with his friends. And that's when they spray for mosquitoes in the neighborhood. So we kept him home Sunday nights, did some, some detoxification and he was having severe headaches every single Sunday, but he'd have them during the week, but it was worse on Sundays. And uh, within a month, all of his issues were gone. That's a very quick children detoxify really quickly. In, in many cases, we kept him on that for a little bit longer than that, but his headaches totally went away. Uh, gastrointestinal, obviously this can come from ingesting them, the pesticides, leaky gut, um, glyphosate's famous for that, for causing leaky gut, bloating, pain, cramping, loss of appetite, diarrhea, vomiting, pretty common. Mitochondrial dysfunction is a big one. So if you look at the Krebs cycle, you look at the electron transport chain, a lot of those pesticides are toxic to the energy production chain and they're going to cause a lot of problems with the ability for your body to heal to to create hormones so your body if it doesn't have enough mitochondrial energy if it doesn't have enough atp you can't produce um, the energy to heal the energy to make hormones you can't sleep often at night which makes matters worse you can't heal and recover very quickly you can't build muscle so a lot of that muscle weakness and then other things like chronic cough, if you're breathing them in, it can cause asthma, cough, skin rashes, tingling, itching, allergies, liver issues, because your liver and your kidneys are both detoxifying or trying to move out these chemicals. And like um, many of them, especially glyphosate, there's a heavy link with cancer, different kinds of cancers. Um, one of the things just to point out here is when we look at the body and you're, you're dealing with a pathogen in the body, whether it's you know, a, a, a longstanding um, viral infection or bacterial infection or parasitic infection or fungal yeast infection, always there is an underlying toxin and oftentimes it is pesticides. So if you're fighting an infection, so if you're fighting this, can't get rid of this infection, look more deeply into what could be underlying that infection and get rid of that. And oftentimes the, um, 
the pathogen will resolve itself or can more easily be resolved. So how do you find out? There, is, there are urine and blood tests. This is not my forte. I'm not a functional medicine doctor. I work um, with a lot of um, bioresonance type technology, uh, bioenergetics technology. We do a lot of energetic testing in my clinic, but there are options for urine and blood testing. There's a, an at home. This is easy to, to search for online glyphosate skin prick test. That's only going to look at glyphosate. Um, but 50% of the herbicides out there are glyphosate based. So, or, or glyphosate it's owned by one company. Uh, bioenergetics testing, which is what I do. And we talk about the pulse test. It's so pervasive that if you have a pulse, you have been exposed in this world to um, pesticides, in my opinion. Um, there's really no way to avoid it in our world if you're living in this country. So how do you detox? You're going to want to remove, first and foremost, remove and minimize, remove and or minimize the sources. Some things you cannot get away from, it's just too much um, in our environment, but try to minimize those things and remove the sources that you can. Like I was talking about the food supply and um, changing what you do to spray in your household or around in your garden, finding more natural alternatives to that. I had a man come to me with a lot of neurological issues. He was losing, he was actually diagnosed with dementia and came up with, with pesticides. And he said, oh yes, I was the rep for 50 years, I think, for a huge pesticide company. And this man was obsessed with no weeds. And I could not get him to stop spraying ground up in his yard. He couldn't, he, it, it was so ingrained in him that a weed was so terrible that he had to immediately kill it, that he would walk around his yard every day and spray ground up. And I said, there's a recipe, there are recipes out there. My husband makes one that's like vinegar and salt and I think a little bit of soap. And it just takes maybe three days to kill the weeds instead of, you know, an hour or less. Uh, but there are options out there. So after you're minimizing, uh, identify the sources, minimize those or remove them, you want to optimize your energy production because if you're not producing enough energy and you start trying to detox from something, your body may stir it up a little bit and just deposit it somewhere else. So if you don't have the energy to move it out of the body, and if you don't have the ability to move it out of the body, sometimes you can just make things worse. You want to reduce inflammation at a cellular level, because if your cell membrane is inflamed, you can't move good nutrition into the cell and you can't take toxins out of the cell. So you've got to take steps to reduce inflammation, open the drainage pathways. If you're not having regular bowel movements, don't move into detoxification because you're just going to auto what they call auto intoxicate. So you may move things into the gut. You're not moving them out. You'll absorb them again and then move into detoxification. So here's some tips. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Even though I told the story about the little boy who was better in a month, we still kept him on it for three months. The longer you've been exposed, the longer you've had symptoms, the longer it's going to take to move those things out of the body. The general, I don't, I don't want to call it a rule, but the general guideline that I was taught you know, 25 years ago when I got into this is if you've had symptoms for a long time, don't expect to be fully through the detox process for it'll take three months plus a month for every year you've been dealing with it. So it can take longer, it can be shorter, and you can have a lot of benefit and a lot of symptomatic relief in that process. But don't give up too early because you might just fall slide back to where you were. So it's it's a marathon, not a sprint. Work with a professional if you've got some serious problems. There are a lot of great practitioners in Houston and around the country. And I highly recommend committing to lifelong detoxification. And I put cycling after that because with detoxification, you need to give your body breaks to build. So the body works in cycles. So you're gonna wanna work um, on a detox if you're ready to detox and then take a break and build for a little bit and then detox and then break to build so that your body goes through these normal cycles. Everything in our body, our body's a flow system and it works in cycles. It's beautiful and amazing how our bodies work and our bodies have this 
amazing ability to heal themselves. We just need to give it the information and the tools that the body needs to heal itself. So work on, in, in terms of a diet, work on a clean diet, a variety of foods with lots of antioxidants to help bring that inflammation down, lots of fruits and vegetables, clean <laughs> quality proteins and lots of clean water. So we can talk later if you guys have questions about those things, um, we can go into them in the Q and A section. Getting outside is so important. Sunshine is so important. And we are so fortunate that we live in a place where we have a lot of sunshine year round. Most people don't. And most people, even in Houston, aren't exposed to the sun. And getting the sun through a window is not the same as being outside in the sun. Our bodies are like solar panels and we're meant to be energized by the sun. So without glasses, without sunscreen, in the morning, uh, early morning, late evening, you won't have damage to the skin at those times. Get some sun exposure and do some grounding, which just means barefoot on the soil, not sprayed with pesticides, barefoot on the soil so that you can absorb some of those amazing electrons that the earth has to provide that will bring inflammation down in the body and speed healing. Moving is super important. We, like I said a minute ago, we are a flow system and our bodies are meant to move. The more we sit still, the more things stagnate and they can't get out of our systems. And sweating, super important. Saunas, detox baths, exercise, all of those are really important. Our body detoxifies through the skin, the lungs, the kidneys, and the colon. The liver has a big part to do with that, but those are the major exit points. And if we're not opening all those exit points through water, breathing, sweating, and having regular bowel movements, we're going to auto intoxicate. And those things are going to keep coming through and back into our system. And supplements are super important with this. You can do chelation therapy. There are some doctors that will do that. Uh, make sure you're doing binders with them. Humix and fulvix are very important and super, super helpful. Um, fulvic, humix stay in, um, in the gut. So when you're trying to get rid of toxins, they will absorb toxins through the gut. Um, the fulvix will actually leave their short chain and they are small enough to leave the gut and they go throughout the body and they will attach to toxins, pull them out. Zeolite's another popular one. There are lots of, of, of good detoxification supplements out there. You have to be careful though. A lot of people will go to something like um, activated charcoal, which will absorb nutrients as well. So you, uh, some of these, you have to be careful and work with a professional or be educated yourself because you want to make sure that you're not depleting your nutrients at the same time um, that you're pulling your toxins out. So that was, I hope I made it in 20 minutes. I didn't, I went over. I'm so sorry. Uh, but no. hopefully, we to, hopefully we have time for some questions. Um, I'll, I'll shut this down and we can open it up for questions. Excellent. Good job there, Tracy. That is so much great information. Um, you. Uh, you, if you, there you go. Uh, one of the things that popped up since I can jump in here with several questions, um, mm -hmm. who's most at risk for chemical exposure? I mean, is there an age group? Is there a gender? Is there who 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 really gets hammered by toxins? It's a great, great question. Well, so let me back up. And I didn't talk about this a little bit. Children very much are because they just um, they're smaller, right. right? So they can say as an adult, the acceptable uh, amount of exposure to this chemical is whatever, 10 parts per million. But think about a child or a baby, they're, they're so much smaller. So 10 parts per million is 10 times as much, 10 times as toxic to them. So the smaller you are, the more inclined you are to absorb those things. Another thing um, is somebody who doesn't methylate well. Uh, if, and I highly recommend getting some genetic testing done uh, for methylation. There's there are several genes that are important with that MTHFR and COMT, and you're very familiar with uh, many of those. So if you're not methylating well, your body can't detoxify well. So for instance, I'm not a very good methylator. And if I'm exposed to mercury and I had a ton of mercury fillings in my mouth, I could only detoxify 20% compared to someone who methylates well. So my body will hold on to those. So I have to work a little bit harder, a lot bit harder to move those metals out. And in saying that, um, 
a lot of these pesticides actually have mercury in them and aluminum in them. If you look at the expanded name, you'll be like, oh, that says mercury something or aluminum something. So they're also, it's the chemicals, but it's also the heavy metals that are in adjuvants or um, carriers or whatever they're doing. I have no idea why they put some of these chemicals in, but it makes them more effective. And then it, the more we're exposed over a long period of time, it's the buildup. Um, of those chemicals and if our parents were exposed to them. So we had back in the um, 50s, that was the DDT generation. So they were exposed to DDT and they've already proven with studies in mice and rats that those toxins are persistent for four generations. So we're not four generations away from DDT. So we probably have DDT, it's still in the soil, but we probably have it in our bodies from passed from our mothers. And then after the DDT generation was, uh, what was the next one after that? Um, oh, lead. So lead in paint. And then we had the mercury generation. Um, and now we have the glyphosate generation. So it's cumulative. So we have to be, and it's not going to get any better. And I'm not saying that to scare people. I'm just saying that to make people be aware that this needs to be part of our lives so that we're not having that constant buildup of, of toxins chemicals that haven't been tested and they certainly haven't been tested cumulatively. Well, I think that's really important. I know that um, a colleague of mine, Enzo Grassi, uh, did some of the really great research on the causes for autism. And autism, uh, it seems that what they were able to determine when uh, it was they tested mothers who had one autistic uh, child and one who had no autistic child. And um, uh, the other child was not autistic. And what they found is chemical exposure of the mothers while they were carrying their children. And so we wonder why we've had such an increase of autism over the past 40 years, 50 years. It's probably because our environments have become more and more toxic, plus the cumulative effect, like you're saying. That's, that's, really, that's really great news. But my biggest concern is where do you start? What's the simplest way to start? Because there seems to be so much out there that uh, is... Um, causing us issues right now, but I mean, this is pretty overwhelming. I know it is. Um, start in your home, start in your home, start with, um, you know, what chemicals are you possibly using in your home and how can you change to something healthier? So that would be number one. Um, if you think about pesticides, so people are still using hand sanitizer all the time. Most hand sanitizers have pesticides in them. Just like our feet, our hands have a lot of, have a big holes, big pores, and we absorb a lot of those chemicals. So start by looking at those kinds of things, um, antibacterial soaps, those kinds of things. All of those are chemicals, but they also help um, reduce our immune, immune function. So foods that you're eating, water that you're drinking, water is huge. Um, Houston water is, I mean, it's got radiation in it, it's got arsenic in it, it's got pesticides in it, it's, you know, it, there, there, there's an array of different um, kinds of water filters that you can get, but anything's better, in my opinion, than Houston tap water, unless you go to the bayou and just scoop up water there. So you're getting, I would uh, at least do something to filter out some of the chemicals in the water and you know you can go all the way to distilling which is the cleanest water that you can get um but you have to add minerals back to that so there's kind of like i said there's a spectrum but anything in my opinion anything's better than than just you know pulling it out of the tap and that's a great place you can um make huge changes is is just even just focusing on the water one uh, comment about the water, though, we're picking up a lot of uh, microplastics in urine uh, from bottled water, I guess, correct? Yeah. So it's filtering is better than bottled. Yes. And I would, you know, there are some great filters out there. Um, yeah, filtering is better than water. Sometimes the filters, there are a couple things with bottled water. Sometimes, um, I mean, it is from microplastics. They let it sit, especially in Houston. It's sitting out in the heat, and the heat is melting essentially the plastic into the water. Um, a lot of those bottled waters are just tap water. And they say they run it through a reverse osmosis unit, but when they do, they don't, they're probably not changing the filters very often. Um, so, you know, they're going to get their biggest bang for their buck. So that I just don't trust 
um, those is as much. Um, glass is going to be a lot better option if you're going to do bottled water. And sometimes you have to do bottled water. You're out and about. Um, but I try to bring like a, a glass or, or stainless steel is better than plastic um, water bottle. And I fill it up at home with my purified water and bring that wherever I go, which sometimes is not the easiest. Have you, I saw some articles a couple of weeks ago saying that something came out where the Brevo filters weren't truly working. Did you see anything about that or know anything? One's the Brita. Oh yeah. The Brita. Yeah. Brita filters. A Brita filter is essentially the same as it's a, just a carbon filter. So even if it is working, it's only knocking down some of the chlorine and probably like if there's lead in the water or big, heavy minerals, but it's not going to take any of the other. I didn't read the articles about it, but that would be like one baby step away from, from tap water. It's better because it doesn't have the chlorine in it, but it doesn't filter out the sodium fluoride. It doesn't filter out the chloramines in it. Um, the sodium fluoride that we now put in the water, um, I was watching an expose on um, fluoride, on sodium fluoride. And it used to come from, I think it was the steel making industry or the glass making industry. We now import sodium fluoride across much of America from China. So they send us these big bags that have skull and crossbones on them. That's their, their chemical version. It's not even sodium fluoride. It's it's got a longer name, fluoric acid, something. And that's what we're, we put in the water supply, um, which is kind of weird because in China, they don't put it in their water supply, but they'll ship it to us and we put it in our water supply. So um, I know. Okay. I think Dr. Pepper has a question for you. Sorry, Dr. I can't, my camera isn't working. So uh, well, you have a beautiful I, view. I know. Thank you. I have two comments or two, one question in the comments. One is uh, with my students, we often deal with the process of water, and I agree with you totally that you should do it out of glass bottles. What we, I often recommend for them, because they don't, they sort of look at me with disbelief at times, not quite, but I just say, okay, put your, your plastic bottle in the sun for a day and then drink that water and it tastes horrible. And so now you know the difference subjectively. I'm not recommending drinking the water, but that's a kind of experiential way. But the next that's question- That's a great I idea. Do, the next question I really ask is the impact of all the pesticides or all these substances, whatever they may be, at the different developmental levels and growth spurts, in, in, in both in utero and later on again, when we have these major changes during uh, puberty. Uh, because I'm thinking of the drug thalidomide, which only, was a, which only had a big effect in the first three months. I think I forgot the exact. Thereafter, it's totally, almost, I won't say safe, but basically say for the for the mother, it's only as a very short window of time when it made the terogenic effects. Is that you have anything like that about any of this? Do you know any of that? You may have covered that because I came in late. No, I did not. And that's a great point. I thank you for sharing that about the water. I'm going to use that um, for sure. The um, I don't know. And to be honest, I don't know that there are a whole lot of studies, but there might be about that. It would make sense that it would be worse in certain trimesters. Uh, I don't think that most mothers are, um, it's kind of like alcohol in certain in trimester, different trimesters, it will have different effects as well on the development. Um, but I would imagine it's it's very, very similar. And you know, no mother's gonna go out and be purposely exposed to it. So it's those kinds of things are probably hard to track in some ways because a lot of women don't know of their exposure. Um, you know, they don't realize that they walked outside right after the mosquito truck came by and sprayed them with um, you know, and sprayed the neighborhood with. A mosquito spray. I, as a kid, and maybe some people on this call did the same thing. I used to ride my bicycle after the mosquito truck while it was spraying us as kids. Yes, Carolyn. Um, and, you know, I'm sure that didn't do much for my development either, but I imagine different phases. It's probably um, highly impactful at dur during certain phases, especially going through puberty as well in utero for sure, but going through puberty as well. Yeah, very good point. I'll have, can I ask one more question? Absolutely. And that is many of these substances also store in the body's fat. 
you know. And so what, what happens is that they're stored, they're not very harmful, quote. But then you go, people, many people go on yo-yo diets, they, and then they lose the fat, then they get re-exposed again, then they gain fat, and it keeps going back and forth. Any comments or any data on that kind of, how if that makes a bigger impact? Really? Absolutely. And the brain, I did this because the brain is mostly fat. So they store in the brain as well, um, which, you know, can lead to all kinds of things. I recommend when people are dieting to take, like I was, I was talking about binders earlier to take binders and to do things to, to facilitate detoxification at the same time. So that yo-yo doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. And of course they need to reduce exposure so that they're not re-exposing themselves on the outside as well. Um, but that, that is a great point because that is a very, very common thing to happen is, and a lot of people are like, why do I feel so bad when I'm on a diet? Well, because your body's releasing all those chemicals. So if you take things to support liver function, kidney function and binders, so that as you stir up those toxins, you bind with those toxins and can get them out um, is to me, that is, is the best, um, solution as well as doing things like maybe taking saunas, um, making sure that you're sweating Epsom salt baths, a great way to easily and gently move toxins out a really hot Epsom salt bath will really help move toxins out through the skin. And since our skin is our biggest organ, you can get a lot out through that, um, through that Avenue. And of course it's relaxing and wonderful. And you're absorbing magnesium at the same time. But for people who do Epsom salt baths, one, one suggestion I have is one, use organic Epsom salt. Don't get the kind that's like, uh, has a smells to it because a lot of times they add chemicals. So just get plain. You can add your own essential oils if you want, uh, um, organic Epsom salts and rinse off after you bathe. Um, don't just get out of the water because that water is toxic because you've been detoxing through your skin. So make sure that you rinse off after you finish that um, Epsom salt bath. But that's a great thing that anyone can do at home just to help move those, um, gently move some of those chemicals out of the system. Excellent. This is so, many, so much to take in right now. And we looked at on your website for your filter recommendation and they're not available. <laughs> <laughs> they must be popular. So they all sold out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there, um, there is another company that, um, I just ordered a filter for, from, um, is called, uh, clearlyfiltered.com. And I, I'm saying that I have not researched this hundred percent, but people that I know that have researched it and are very, very good with, um, all natural things that is, uh, have recommended is clearly filtered. And what I just ordered today, I ordered a, a hand, like a jug filter. Um, and this takes fluoride out, uh, sodium fluoride and the pesticides and all kinds of stuff. It's a really good filter. It's a slow filter because it's got to filter through all of that. But, um, they also have water bottles that are either glass or stainless steel and, uh, that have a filter in them. And you can pour, you know, the water in, it will filter as you drink out of the straw. And you, that's a great one for traveling because you can just use the faucet anywhere you go and you have your own purified water. Um, they're having a, I'm saying this, I have no connection with this company. I'm looking at my phone because they are having a sale, a uh, Black Friday sale. And the code is clearlyfilter.com and the code is BF20. And you get 20% off. <laughs> so you might want to look there and they have, they have not whole house filters, but they have under the sink kind of filters that you can get to. And uh, I think distilling is, is um, a better option, but there's not a portable distilling unit that you can take with you. So that's from what I know, that's the best kind of portable uh, water filter that you can use. And if you've got kids, you know, and they're, they're taking their water bottle to school, they can fill it up at the, you know, faucet there as well. So much great information. I tell you, we're, uh, it's pretty overwhelming. I think back to my life, I was in Vietnam, I was exposed to Agent Orange. I was with the A triple F uh, foam with the fire department for 20 years, all that yes. carcinogen, uh, you know, and I was a commercial diver diving in the ship channel here for a long time 
And I'm just thinking, you know, if I went to detox, it could kill me, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I got so much in there. I was thinking about losing weight. Now I'm going, oh my God, if I lose weight, I'm going to be, you know, <laughs> detoxifying myself. I needed to stay in the fat. It's uh, frustrating, you know, it's like, uh, I know. all I can do is help to save the kids, I guess. You know, no, no, no. You can definitely make, you can definitely make changes and just do it. You just do it slowly. And in that process that I outlined where you optimize mitochondrial function, you optimize, bring down the cell membrane inflammation, then you make sure that the drainage funnel. So you make sure that your, all your drainage is open and you take binders and the right supplements, you can um, you can absolutely detox and even get those chemicals out. Even though I have the MTHFR gene on top of that, yep. right? <laughs> I, I have it, yeah, I have it. Um, you just have to you know, make sure you're taking the right methylation products. It can be done for sure. Well, good thing I know somebody. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> well, we have about a few more minutes of discussion, but... Um, before we continue, I just want to let everyone know that this is going to be recorded. This has been recorded and we will have it up on our HNBC YouTube by tomorrow. Um, a link should be sent out to y'all as well. Our next discussions is going to be on Wednesday, December the 13th from 12 to 1 central time. Dr. Ron and I are going to be talking about how to deal with holiday stressors and setting boundaries and ways that you can help manage your peace throughout the holiday season. And so we'll send out a registration link for that one as well. Um, so yeah, if you have any more questions, feel free to pop in before our time ends. Tracy, what was the name of that company again? The water you were talking about? Leafiltered.com. Leaf? Clearly. clearly oh. I'll, put it in the, I'll put it in the clearlyfiltered.com. Clearly filtered. Yeah. And, and BF20 was the code. Yeah. Filter. I have a question. It, it's not, it, it's kind of related, but um, I, I don't know if this is true or not, but um, I read that fat cells, um, that you're born with like a certain amount of fat cells and what happens is they grow. So when you're losing weight, they shrink. It's like they don't disappear. They, is that true? Um, I mean, I, I know it's a little off subject, but. No, uh, yes. Well, we were talking about fat cells. That's what I understand. I mean, people will do surgeries and things like that to, to take out fat cells. Um, but uh, that's, that's the understanding that I have too. So they just fill up and they'll fill up with toxins um, yeah. and then they will collapse down um, as you lose, lose weight. And I okay. think there's a part in point in your life I could be wrong, but it's through puberty where it, it can shift that number, but I'm not a hundred percent sure about that. So, okay. Well, that's good to know. I, I wondered about that. <laughs> I thought, darn, I thought they just disappeared and evaporated or something. <laughs> well, they, I think they get small enough that it doesn't matter, but that's my understanding. Um, I, I could be wrong um, there. There might be a doctor on here that knows that answer to that. No, I think that's what I've heard as well in the past. And, uh, you know, but uh, like I say, there's so many fat cells in your body and your brain is primarily made up of fat. So I had one uh, last story. I had a, a little boy. He was born in the United States, but his parents were from Egypt. And when he was uh, two, three years old, they went back to Egypt and they uh, he got into some insecticide, drank it, and had to have a stomach pumped and everything else. And then at six years old, he started wetting the bed and they couldn't figure out what it was from. So luckily I had Dr. Melissa Jones, who's integrative psych a neurologist, and she ran a bunch of tests and she found out he had toxic levels of insecticide uh, uh, that were leaching themselves out of his fat cells as he was growing. And it started affecting his pituitary gland, which is full of fat cells around the brain. And it, affects the water control system so if something like that odd happens after somebody a little child is fully potty trained and starts wetting the bed it could be due to some sort of chemical exposure and that's why i love working with the functional medicine docs because you guys can dig in deeper into the areas i, I only do brains i don't do bodies so it's <laughs> i gotta have you guys to figure out what's going on when i see that the brain will tell us usually if there's something uh, a toxin or a metabolic issue um when it uh, we get the 
reports back from the neurologist, they'll call it encephalopathy. And it's amazing the toxins we have here in Houston, uh, from the mold from Hurricane Harvey to the uh, to the lead to the I just had my first arsenic come back in a young child the other day. And it was like, how in the world did he get arsenic? But now you tell me it's in the water. <laughs> OK, well, that could be it. Some kids. Is it true? Some children can't chelate as well as other children. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and if they're bathing in a hot tub, you know, they're absorbing it through their skin. Um, there's just a lot. You know, there's even radiation. I don't know if I said that in the water and 80 percent of the water in Texas has radiation or 80 percent of the people drink water with radiation and radioactive elements. I don't mean like EMF radiation. I mean, radioactive elements. So there's a lot. Well, I guess we're pretty lucky we survived as well as we do, but uh, I do think there are things we can do better. But thank you so much for your time. Thank you for everything. The, the knowledge, I think, is great uh, stuff that I wasn't aware of, but I'm so glad to have met you at one of these functional medicine meetings. And uh, let's continue the work out there. Wonderful. Thank you all. Thank you all for being here. And thank you, Dr. Ron, for having me. Yes, Thanks so thank much you for your presentation. Me. I appreciate it, Tracy. Thank you all so much. All right. Have thank a happy you. Thanksgiving. Thanks. It was Thanks. great. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye, guys. Bye. All right. Good job, Tracy. What a what a oh, wonderful presentation. So much. Sorry I went over. No, 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 no. Excellent. No, you did great. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity. Yeah. I, I, this is more than I expected. Um, it, 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 it was at a point, I could do that. I could do that. I could do that. And all of a sudden, it was like, I can't do all that. <laughs> you even know, little, even little bits can I, can make a big difference. I do like saunas, but then you're telling me if I take a bath, I'm going to be getting radiated. If I take, a, if I get in a hot tub, I'm going to get all these other chemicals. If I go swimming, I'm going to get all these other chemicals. Oh my! So here's something about the bath: you won't get so the radioactive elements that are in the water. Those specific elements don't absorb through the skin. They only absorb through oral. The gut. So the don't gut. drink the bath water. I'll plan on so that. So don't drink, drink the bath water, but you can take a bath in it. <laughs> and they do have they do have filters you can put on your on your bathtub. Or you can get a whole house filtration unit. Gosh, you know, I'm thinking more and more about that all the time because the amount of money I spend on bottled water for wow. years has been enormous. Uh, but you know, we've got the little, I don't know what kind of filter it is, but it's probably the Brita, you know, after you said yeah. it's not really any good. Okay. And, uh, but I think the, uh, the under the sink would be an option um, as a filtration and do those clear filters, they have those as well. Yep, they have those. Um, you can, there's a man that I use here in Houston, uh, McDonald filtration that does a great whole house unit. His wife, I believe, had breast cancer. And um, he would be somebody good to talk, to have speak on water. He wrote an article for our newsletter. And he What's created a filter. Uh, Lamar, this is Lamar, my marketing manager, still on. I don't know if she knows she's still on. Uh, oh, she yeah. Is. Alan McDonald uh, is, is, um, the name, and as Tracy said, it's McDonald Filtration, I believe is the name of the company. And we're happy to put you on our uh, email list, and I can send you uh, the article. Certainly, that would be wonderful. You yeah, he's done a good. Yeah, just uh, Tracy has my email, but that would be great. I'd love okay. to have all that information I could because this is scary. Now I'm thinking about my bug guy that comes by and sprays once a month. You know, he just does a little around the edges and everything mm -hmm. else. And I'm going, that's probably not organic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can send you uh, the our organic guy that we use uh, as well. Yeah, I've yeah used send that for me years. because I got a cat and I'm, I know my cat sniffs around that part and it's getting exposed to it. And so that's probably not good. I, I hate bugs. I'm kind of like the weed guy. I don't want a bug in my house, but <laughs> but not to the point I'm hurting my kill, my cat, my wife, you know, so. <laughs> no it, it's uh you know it's all those little things and we don't think about them right because it's just part of our lives no. No. and um but even making those two changes will be excellent for you all right i'll work on it and then i'll come back to you for more okay. i appreciate it so much you Sounds want to come good. visit us sometime okay i would love to i would Please. love to i want to see it isabella or Kristen can set it up and just come out and 
ring staff or whoever you'd like to. I'd love to show you around. Sounds great. Well, All thank right. you. I appreciate it so much. Have a great Thanksgiving. Bye, Tracy. Thanks. Bye-bye.